Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It's Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. I think, like, the time change really is affecting me today. It Why? just hit me. Really? Yeah, I just can't catch up on the sleep. I think it's affecting my taste in wardrobe as well. This, I love your parachute no, this is, jacket. This is all bad, but we can talk about that later. In the meantime, let's talk about today's show. Coming up today on Houston Life, just in time for the big NCAA tournament happening this week, a little crash course in college basketball 101. I love this. We're also going to give some tips on the bracket as well. Then staying on track with your health, what you can do now to lower your risk, risk for developing colon cancer and the signs and symptoms to watch out for. Plus, we're talking flooring, carpet versus hardwood. We'll explore the benefits of both flooring options to help you figure out which is best for your home. And Joe Sam is in studio with a story of a remarkable woman. Hi, Joe. Happy Tuesday, guys. Yeah, we're heading to the sky with a 25-year-old female pilot who's educating other women about flight and aviation as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month. That's coming up. We're going to send things back to you. That looks so beautiful up there, Joe. Can't wait to learn more. Before we get into all of that though why don't we get a check of your forecast hi frank it's beautiful outside today yep that front came through overnight and it's absolutely gorgeous i don't even see a cloud in the sky it's just it's as blue as my shirt take a look outside in that gorgeous uh we got temperatures right there in the low 70s so not as warm as it's been but some mid 70s sneaking into sugarland and galveston 75 76 if you're headed out to the carnival good shape right there 74 at 4 72 at 5 68 at 7 gwen stefani is in the house tonight it's going to be comfortable then clear skies continue. A little chilly at 11 o'clock, but not too bad, 58 degrees. There is a rain chance in our forecast. We'll talk about that coming up in about half an hour. All Pardon. right, Frank, thanks so much. Yeah, we'll see you, Gwen Stefani. Are you going? Are you going? No, I'm ah. not going. Oh, that's right. You got to be on TV. Oh, okay. You're okay. going with Angela, aren't you? Yeah, well, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. I think so. <laughs> it's going to be a great show, though, Frank. Thanks yeah. for the forecast. We'll see you in just a bit. All right, so for more than 30 years, Austin's annual film, music, and media festival, known as South by Southwest, has been celebrating the creativity of artists from all over the globe. And this year, it is back in person. Of course, after going virtual the past couple of years due to the pandemic, KPRCT reporter Zach Lajway joins us live this afternoon afternoon from Austin and the festival. What a great day to be there. Courtney, I'll tell you what, this is the party that never ends. Today is day five of South by Southwest. Speaking right now just inside these doors is Facebook CEO and founder Mark Zuckerberg. He's appearing before a crowd of about 2,000 people via video conference, and he is one of just many big names speaking at this conference. As you mentioned, this is the first time this festival is back in person since 2019, and people are very excited. South by Southwest, like previous years, has attracted huge names in Hollywood, music, and media, including many big names from Houston, like Lizzo. The music star spoke at South by, where she vocalized her stance on Texas politics, including policies and laws that she says target and restrict women and LGBTQ people. When Lizzo was not addressing serious issues, she was having fun promoting her new reality show, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. We spoke with Houston's big girl, Sydney Bell, and Sydney's mother, Lavette, about how this show addresses representation. When I was growing up, this is not something that I saw. It wasn't even a space that was even remotely possible. This space is created by young people like her and the other girls that just, you know, they're, they're creative, they're talented. And to be able to open doors for the next generation and generations to come. I grew up never seeing women that looked like me in media, in reality TV. Um, so this is really what I stand for on social media and when I'm modeling, just to see the representation that we never, never saw growing up. So listen, coming up tomorrow on The Morning Show, we're going to bring you inside Lizzo's pop-up party. Trust me, you do not want to miss it. We're also going to continue this conversation with Sydney and her mother about representation. They have a special message for youth throughout Houston watching, so you do not want to miss it. But for now, I want to leave you guys with this view. Look at this. Austin is spectacular on this Tuesday afternoon. We are live in downtown Austin for South by Southwest. And with this beautiful picture, we're going to toss things back to you. 
Way to studio. rub it in, Zach. It does look amazing. <laughs> look hey, at real this. quickly, Isn't it, beautiful? it is so beautiful. Yeah. We love Austin. You know, if people haven't gotten a ticket just yet, and I know this is such a great party, Derek and I were talking about how much this event has grown over the years, but can we still get tickets for this event? Yeah, so people do have the opportunity to come down. They can buy. We have, um, I, if you bear with me for two seconds, we have credentials, and it's, uh, it's in my bag right here. These are what our credentials look like. But if you want to come on down, you can buy uh, day passes. Great. They're they're bracelets, and they get you into uh, a few different conferences, a few different festivals within the main festival. Zach, it is is such a cool event. Started in 87, and I know you're meeting people from all over the world. So enjoy the beautiful day and have fun at the festival. We'll see you Thank soon. You Looking forward to a story tomorrow morning as yeah. well. Okay, time to announce this week's winner for our T-shirt Tuesday. The saying this week is... Think, Think outside, outside the, the box. box. This is a good one. This was sent in by KPRC2 insider Helen Forsyth. Helen, thank you so much for your submission and keep an eye on your mailbox because we'll be sending these shirts your way. Yeah, I love this one too. And if you want to get your saying on a future shirt, just head to HoustonLife.tv. Submit your favorite quote. You never know what we're going to pick. And still to come, she's an award-winning journalist, foodie, busy mom, and wife. Catherine Whaley is weighing in on what is trending today in our H-Town sit-down. She's going to join us on the couch. Yeah, don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. It is time now for our H-Town sit-down. Yeah, let's meet today's guest. You've seen her covering Houston traffic on TV, but Catherine Whaley is also a busy mom, wife, and foodie. In her spare time, she's cooking up yummy treats and eats on her Instagram page to help make mealtimes a breeze for busy families at home. Today, Catherine is weighing in for our H-Town sit-down. And here she comes, Catherine Whaley. Join us on the sofa. Hello, friends. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for coming in. Uh, well, thank Great you for having me on, on Derek. Right. We were just joking during the break that yeah. Catherine and I have seen each other more in the past month or so than we have in years. It's been like almost a daily basis. <laughs> and I'm not it, complaining. <laughs> <laughs> almost daily. Well, and as we just saw in, in the piece, I mean, busy wife, busy mom, the yes. food you make at home, a lot of people must ask you, how do you make it look so good? Because anyone who's ever tried to cook with the phone well, let it's me not tell easy. you, you only see the good stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, there are many times where the food just lands on my toddler's high chair and then on the floor. So um, so we try to style it to make it look good. But I know, and fun. that's what it's all about, right? Yes. I mean, you want it to look pretty so other people make the recipes, and they are exactly. so good. I've copied a few of your, uh, few of your recipes that. that you've posted. Yes. Let's talk about just a little family time, because it was your son's actual first rodeo this year, right? It was. So it was William's first, very first rodeo. So cute. And when I tell you he rode all the things, we rode tractors, we rode animals, we rode cars. He loved it. He's obsessed with cars, so we just really enjoyed doing all the rides that he was able to ride. And yes, great rodeo food that we got to enjoy while we were out there. That was a funnel cake, which I think is a rodeo must, but we had a great time. Lots no of bull riding fun. just yet, right? Not yet. I mean, I guess we may start out with mutton busting, but right. um, yeah, maybe maybe not ever bull riding. <laughs> okay. Thomas says no bull riding. so dangerous. Okay, yes. well, on the topic of, you know, being at the road Rodeo. We've got to talk about music and yes. every time you guys when I'm scrolling something and I see either a post or a photo of Dolly Parton it stops me on my tracks and I'm almost afraid to read it because I don't know what it is but yes. Dolly Parton did you guys hear that she bowed out of consideration for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame which I thought why is she doing this she's pulling out because she says she hasn't quote earned that right again this is the rock and roll hall of fame the music icon has been elected into the country music hall of fame and explained her decision in a statement basically on her social media pages that she just didn't want to take any of the remaining votes away from the rock and roll artists what do you guys think of this and i mean yet another reason to love dolly right. i suppose because she's just so gracious and thoughtful but um you know if dolly part never puts out a rock and roll album you better be sure i'm listening to it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes Every and, song. and she yeah. did say in the statement that this has sort of encouraged her to, to release a rock and roll album. So I think it's coming. It's interesting. And she is just such a Southern belle, right? She I mean, really is. Yeah. I mean, I love that. But I thought it was interesting that it she is. was, you Thanks, know, but just no saying, thanks. Yeah. Right. There's so much uh, crossover music, too. You know, you can right. make a case, I guess, for that also. But she's just, I mean, she 
she's just a country darling. She is. Love her. Okay, yeah. let's talk about another working mama, one of our favorites here. We love Sandra Bullock. Derek yeah. calls her Sandy. Have you ever met her? That's her name. Uh, Sandra. We, the rest <laughs> of the world knows her as, as Sandra. Sandra. Well, she apparently is taking a step back from acting. She's 57 years old. She's adopted two children. She says her career has been 24-7 and wants to be with her family. She's a single parent. Her kids are now 12 and 10. Wow. And says yeah. she wants to just be servicing their every need and managing their social calendars. <laughs> so at that 20. age, let me tell you, it's major, even at William's age, right? Yes. I mean, there's soccer music. I mean, Courtney, you know, you have two and I know you're doing a lot of that too. It is. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But you know, you stepped away from your career. Yes. I did for a bit. I mean, what do you think about when moms publicly do that? I think it's awesome. I, I mean, I applaud her. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. If you have, if you have the option to be able to choose to do that, I, I think it's a great thing, but there are many wonderful ways to be a wonderful mother, but I've always seen her as a great role model anyway. I, so, I agree. Yeah. Well, if you have the option, Catherine, I'm glad you said that because clearly she She's not hurting in the money department. Right, she can right. afford to take yes. that time at home. I still can't believe that Sandy, Sandra Bullock, <laughs> is 57 years old. She looks amazing. Your BFF, Sandy. Uh, <laughs> while you were sleeping, do you remember that film yeah, from back course. in the day? Yeah. I mean, I remember Speed. Oh, yeah, yes. that's right. This that was geniality. around the same time. Yeah, I mean, exactly. all of it. Uh, her latest film, The Lost City, which she's starring with uh, Channing Tatum. Ch Channing Tatum. Channing we know Tatum. Tatum. Yeah. Uh, he, it comes out tomorrow, I think, or Thursday. So but she shot that latest. before she took the break. She did. Yes. So maybe you're saying maybe this is just a, another conversation to kind of up the right. pop for her. Right, perhaps it's here, too. Yeah, I hope she comes back, though, know. because Good she's fantastic. She is. Okay, we so we've sprung forward. Now everybody's spring cleaning, apparently. Is this kind of like a thing? Are you spring cleaning I, mean, I, I am does. I love I love spring cleaning and I'm not gonna lie <laughs> so is that more of like a purging situation because yes. here's what's happening is in this poll we Americans say spring cleaning helps improve happiness and a survey of 2,000 Americans found almost 80 percent 78 percent people think that there's a direct link between how clean and tidy their home is and their mental well I believe it yes for sure yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I think we saw this during pandemic as True. well. You know, people spending more time at home, so wanting to reinvest in their homes and making it a cleaner, tidier space in some places more enjoyable. So, I mean, I think it's a good thing. You I, know what's funny <laughs> is when I come home and the boys, and my husband included in this, they've all been home. I come home and there's like 19 different cups laying around and oh, all this no. stuff. Up. Like, this house is a mess. What's going on? Yeah. You get one water cup, right? Maybe it's a right. function of getting older, but when I was a kid, I remember thinking, you're sort of in buying mode. My mom's yeah. always said you spend the first half of your life accumulating stuff and you spend the second half of your life figuring out how to get rid of it. And there is no greater joy at my 40 year old age than seeing an empty shelf at home. Yeah, I love it. I it's mean, it's Condo thinking, you know, getting rid of stuff and enjoying things more. Yeah, your mother was wise. I yes. think so. Yes. Too. Thank yes. you. Kat. So say thank you for your service and move on. That's right. right. That's thank you. Plus it say thank you. Um, OK, as a foodie, are you a fan of food trucks? Do you like I, I love food trucks, right? I, I mean, yes. I feel like over the yes. last couple of years, Houston really got big sure. in the food truck scene. Well, there's a list of some of the best food truck cities in Texas. This is done by Lawn Starter. They compared 100 Texas cities to find the best food trucks. This was all based on number of food trucks and festivals and that kind of thing. Here's the top six right oh. here. Austin, Waco, San Antonio. Houston comes in at fourth. Um, seven and eight was Spring and Friendswood. Didn't, well, there we go. didn't have enough room on there, but I thought oh, that was really that interesting. interesting. And Friendswood, well, and Austin, I can understand that. Yeah. Waco, that's a surprise. What to are me. they? What are they serving in Waco? I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> what are they serving in those? Meat also, why is Waco Waco and Taco Taco? Have you ever thought about that? Mm, these are no. deep, deep thoughts, Derek. <laughs> it's <laughs> virtually the same spelling. It just hmm. a letter off. Ponder that one. <laughs> English language, you know. <laughs> Okay, well, yes. let's put a pin in that for a moment. In okay. the meantime, let's bring in Joe Sam, who has today's question of the day. Hey, Joe. Hey, yeah, that's right. We want to hear from you. Fill in the blank. Houston is the best city for blank. We already have those answers coming in. Let's take a look right now. Daniel, he writes in for us, delicious food, hands down. Nowhere else has it better. I'm going to have to give it to you on that, Daniel. Well, 
I'm going to be biased with Louisiana, so we're going to have to have a fight with that, Daniel. Kathy, she writes in, getting lost. I have lived here most of my life and still get lost at times. Yeah, oh, GPS, yeah. no help, you guys. All right, coming in next, we have Skipper. He writes in, biking. Since we moved here four years ago, my wife and I have biked over 7,500 miles. Wow. Whew, they are in shape. Good for you guys. We want you to all head over to our Houston Life Facebook page and join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Courtney, Dara, Catherine, what do you guys think? Great oh, outdoor spaces. Yeah. I'm yeah. a bike trail fan yeah. as well. Yeah, and the way that just our city has kind of transformed, Discovery Green, the bike lanes, everything that we can exactly. do outside. And moving outdoors, I love that. Mm -hmm. Have you found that having your little one, William, at home has sort of changed the way you see the city? Because <laughs> kid-friendly spots Absolutely. in Houston. And we love walking places. So anywhere that's within a mile, we can usually walk to. So we love doing that when we can. Mm -hmm. Exercise, outdoors, it's you so know, good. time with the kiddo. We love it. Everybody knows I just got my dog, Ghost, so I've been doing a lot of that exploring more of Houston. With Ghost exploring it all with me, you and I get more, I get to meet like, more people because they all love dogs. Totally. Buffalo Bayou, right? Is yeah. that where you like to go? With Favorite Ghost? park, Buffalo it's Bayou Park. We have a good time parks. there. It's mm -hmm. so good. All right, Joe. We'll see you in a little bit. I can't wait for your story coming up. And Catherine, it was so great to see you. Thanks Thank for you for having me. On the couch. It was wonderful being with you too. Yeah. Thank you. Come, come back and treat. see us again soon. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. Love Enjoy it. your spring break too. Thank you. You yes, too. We'll do. Uh, when we come back, what can you do now to lower your risk for developing colon cancer? The signs and symptoms to watch out for. And later on, we'll check in with Lauren Kelly, who's hanging out with some of our friends over at U of H and getting a crash course in college basketball. Looks like it's going pretty well so far. Don't go away. Houston Lane. Woo, right Lauren! Back. Welcome back. Turning now to your health and the importance of colon cancer screenings. Doctors are beginning to see younger patients diagnosed with colon cancer, but the good news is the disease is treatable, especially if it is caught early. We have joining us today Dr. Harith Mushtaq, the UT Health Colon and Rectal Surgeon affiliated with Memorial Hermann. Thanks so much for joining us, doctor. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Let's first talk about colon cancer. People hear these two words and they don't want to talk about it. They're nervous. Um, we need to really talk about where this is, what parts of the body, so people can understand this type of cancer. Right, absolutely. So uh, colon cancer is the kind of cancer that usually starts in the colon. Uh, and uh, usually as an early stage, they start, most of those colon cancer, they start as a polyp, which is a growth from the wall of the colon. And when those polyps, they don't get resected, they grow with time, they change into a precancer polyp and then change to a cancer that invade the wall and go to the lymph node and other organs. So I know, as you mentioned, as this word, usually it's bring fear to a lot of people, but colon cancer, although it can be a life-threatening condition, if, it, uh, if we discover it early, we have a high chance of resecting it and remove it and even prevent it from progressing to a full cancer. And let's talk about for those who are at risk, uh, whether that means hereditary, diet, all sort of the risk factors here. Yeah, excellent. Just like what you mentioned, there's a couple of risks, although that the all of the population are at risk, but there's a certain people that are usually at a higher risk, and those are the people they have hereditary symptoms. Like if you have a first degree relative, like sibling, parent, children with a colon cancer, that puts you at a higher risk of having that. And you should get screened uh, for colon cancer. Diet, there's a lot of studies that show that a high fat, fat diet uh, is associated with that. Smoking also puts you at a higher risk of developing colon cancer. Uh, so those are the main things. Uh, also certain uh, population like uh, male at a higher risk, African American at a higher risk of developing colon cancer. And let's talk about the signs and the symptoms. So sometimes people say, you know, well, I didn't know or I, I knew, but I, I kind of ignored the symptoms. Let's just break this down. When is a good time to say something's not right here and go see someone, a physician like yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent question. So uh, the main symptom that we usually tell patients uh, to seek an immediate care if they start noticing some blood with their bowel movement. Uh, a lot of time we actually start seeing those in young people that they assume is related to something mild. So they that delay their care. Other symptoms, it could be like a frequent uh, abdominal pain, a sense of incomplete 
bowel emptying, uh, if there is any uh, feeling of weakness, unexplainable weight loss, all of those could be a sign that it needs uh, an immediate medical attention and screening sick for colon cancer. And let's say that, you know, those signs and symptoms are there. The next step is a recommended colonoscopy and people, people hear that word too and they go, oh my gosh, I don't know what this entails. I just know there's a lot of prep work. Here's your soapbox, doctor, because the actual colonoscopy, that, that procedure isn't so bad. Right. I Absolutely. So the, the colonoscopy is usually it's an outpatient procedure. Uh, most people actually, and I, I'll be surprised that most, most patients, they complain about the day before the bowel preparation because that's what we need to clean the colon to take a look. But the procedure itself is very uh, safe. It takes only about 20, 30 minutes where we go in the colon. We'll take a look into the colon. And if there's any polyp that they can grow in the future to form a cancer, we'll remove those polyps. If there's anything concerning, we'll get a biopsy from it. And if the colonoscopy looks okay and there's no signs, they need to get it in 10 years from now. So it's very safe. We do it a lot. And this is one of the most important things that have been shown to actually decrease the risk of cancer. Um, so I recommend it for everyone above the age of 45 years old. That's the recommendation by multiple society. And the people we mentioned earlier that at a higher risk of developing colon cancer, they need to get it earlier based on what is that risk. And that is such a true point because you're basically getting a, a, a baseline of what's going on within the colon. Um, and preventing colon cancer, we're talking about uh, diet and exercise, the things that you've already talked about here. This is super important. So if you're at the right. age of 45 or older and have had a colonoscopy without symptoms, you still need to get one. Is that correct? Absolutely. Everyone need to get it at the age of 45 or more. And if you have those symptoms that we mentioned earlier, you actually need to get it regardless of your age. Dr. Mushtaq, thank you so much. Great information today. And we hope we've reached some people to go out there and make that appointment. We do appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. For more information about colon cancer awareness and prevention, visit memorialherman.org slash colon or give them a call. The number's there on the screen, 713-486-4720. Now we're going to switch gears and send things over to Derek. Hi, Derek. All right, Courtney. Thank you. The month of March is best known for rodeo, our first taste of spring weather, and of course, lots of college basketball. Starting today and continuing for the next three weeks, 68 college basketball teams from the NCAA's Division I will compete for the national championship title. It is one of the biggest and most exciting times for sports fans. And Lauren Kelly is giving us a crash course on all of it. So a little college basketball 101, right, Lauren? You know, I'm a professional now that I made that one basket you guys saw a little bit before, but this is the most wonderful time of the year. It truly is. I'm here with U of H's Lauren Sampson. Why don't you tell everybody, first of all, what you do for the UH men's basketball team? I am the director of external operations, so pretty much I do a little bit of everything. Okay, we laughed and we said that you're kind of the bulldog with all the guys on the team, yeah. but for beginners getting into college basketball, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what exactly the NCAA tournament is? Yes, NCAA tournament is the most magical time of year. It is where every single college kid, this is where you want to go, right? Every college basketball player that plays this game, this is the tournament that will make or break careers. Steph Curry was introduced to the country during the NCAA tournament when he and Davidson beat Georgetown. You forget big, about those things, you forget right? forget about those yeah. things. Rob Gray with UH, there are so many legends that are made in this tournament. So we've got Shasta here with us today. Hey, thanks for, thanks for pl practicing with me. We've got the Cougar cheerleaders and the Cougar dolls with us today. It really is such a great thing for the city. Why do you think that when U of H plays and everybody gets so excited. Why do you think that Houston is such a great place for this to happen? We, we're we running out of that tunnel with Houston on our chest. Yeah. Right? When we say we play for the city, we play for the city. Right? We are representative and we're going to go to Pittsburgh with Houston and we're going to be so proud to represent everybody that is going to be here watching and it's a big deal to be on this platform. It is an international platform and we hope to go far and, and to represent all of you. We love it. We love it. Now, a few things I need broken down for me. The term bracket. 
Can we just kind of explain? It's it's how all the teams are broken down, right? Correct. It's almost like a party invite. List, okay, okay. Right? Those are terms I know. Okay. Those are terms we know. It's a party <laughs> invite list, right? And you have east, um, you know, the west bracket. Okay. We're in the south bracket, okay. which means nothing because we're going to be in Pittsburgh, but we're in the south bracket. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. So we gotcha. really like just to mix things up for everybody. But that is the party list. You know who's invited. You know who's right. going to sit at what table, and that's really what the bracket is. Okay. All right. So also, you guys are going to do something really cool. We're going to talk about how you can watch the Cougars play because they play on Friday, correct? Yes. Coming up a little bit later on the show. Shasta, you guys don't go anywhere. Cheerleaders and dolls don't go anywhere. Lauren's going to hang around and we're going to make a couple more shots. You can go ahead and take that now and we're going to talk about how you guys can watch the Cougars play coming up on Friday night for free, right? For so free. that's the biggest part of it all. <laughs> Derek, wa watch Shasta. He's taking the shot for me right now, okay? The, come on, go on. One, <laughs> two, three, shoot. Oh! Nice job. <laughs> Very no, good. With the team too. There we go. Very <laughs> good. And Lauren, I mean, we think you're a pro. We saw that shot you sank right before commercial break. That was great. I mean, I might be able to. Let's see. One last try. Okay, Here we go, go for it. Oh, I'm going to okay, keep so practicing close. before I make my debut, okay? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, Thank Lauren. For now. <laughs> Thanks for that. Well, in honor of Women's History Month, we've got a story that proves sky's the limit. Joe Sam has more on that. Hey guys, coming up, she's only 25 years old and she's already taking charge of the sky. I'll introduce you to the young female pilot serving as an inspiration to other women. And of course, we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at four, including a singer Rod Stewart trading in his mic for a new gig. Peace in Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. Okay. It's okay. It took me a moment <laughs> to think about it as well. Earlier, we asked you to fill in the blank for our question of the day. Houston is the best city for what? Nancy writes in variety in all areas of learning. Ready, set, go, expand your mind. You Love know it. what? That is so true. Houston is a cultural center for sure. And another true statement here by Faith. Philanthropy, Houston, the whole Gulf Coast area is so very good at helping others during catastrophic events. Of course, hurricanes and especially showing appreciation for our emergency responders, law enforcement and firefighters. We sure know how to cohesively come together. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely comment. Agreed. Jim writes in in crazy wild weather. When is spring? When is fall? Keep guessing. I it's know. so true. You know, last night uh, it was a calm, beautiful evening at our house, and Brandon's mom was texting us saying it was raining and lightning at her house, which is not too far from us. And uh, it was a calm evening until one in the morning. And then it was like end of the world flooding rain in our it neighborhood. Was, it was crazy. Did it hit you too? It did, but it wasn't one in the morning. It was probably about 11 where it hit us. So, so interesting. Uh, heavy rain for sure. I'm going to say uh, queso. Oh, is, you know, it comes in all shapes and sizes here, right? Lupe Tortilla is one of my favorites. Alma Latina, always mm. with the chicharrones. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now I'm hungry. Let's Me check too. in with Keith, Christine, and Frank. <laughs> for look what's hungry. coming up at four. Sorry, y'all drooling over there. Yeah, you got us all <laughs> hungry. I, I think Houston is the best city for just about anything you can think of. Agreed. But uh, how about this rolling on dubs? Rolling on dubs. Yes. Okay. 20, I like where you're going. Yeah, come on. I mean, you know, rolling down the highway, yeah. you see yeah. the wheels, and there, we got a lot of those, a lot of good yeah. ones around Houston. For sure. <laughs> I'm right there with Faye. Uh, she took the words right out of my mouth in, in regards to philanthropy in this city. There's uh, so many good charities doing great things yeah. and in times of need. Man, yeah. no one's, nothing's like Houston. I'm on, I'm on Team Courtney uh, Barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, stuff. and really food. I mean, I, I, you know, I've eaten in a lot of nice places around the country, and the, you come back to Houston, it's always better. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It really is. Yeah, especially the Tex-Mex, yeah. <laughs> Nobody does Tex-Mex like Houston. We invented it. We did. Mom and Nympho created half of it. That's yeah, right. right. <laughs> you are right. Any less hungry that, family. I you know. go to other places in the country, like, what, well, you're charging me for tortilla chips? Like, we get those for free. Oh, and, uh, and when you don't get your <laughs> refill on the tea yeah. for free? Oh, oh yeah. Right. You know All you're in the wrong up. place. It's like, oh, what are we in Minnesota? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, wow, you betcha. <laughs> oh, you oh, betcha. My. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, speaking of food, don't, don't take just me yet. Did y'all know, this is about my blog, you took me anyway. Don't take me. Me, yeah. <laughs> did did y'all know that? Well, we can still hear you. Did you know that honey lasts forever? No. Honey lasts. They have archaeologists have found honey in Egyptian tombs that is still edible. Wow. Not spoiled. That's crazy. Not spoiled. It does not spoil. I didn't know that. I did not either. But, but it I learned. Crystallizes, I guess. Then you have to warm it up. Is that nope. how? No. 
We got to read wow. the blog. Oh, interesting. Read the blog. It's a read blog. the blog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there may be some crystallization involved, but you know what? It's amazing. It'll last longer than the container that it's in. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. No but idea. you know, honey's really medicinal. It has hydrogen peroxide in it. It was used like we use hydrogen peroxide. My goodness. Yeah, people wow. would use it as a lotion, and they still make honey honey lotions for stuff. Uh, we gotta I read this no, blog. We, yeah, boy. Bloody information. Frank Honey, place I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Click Easter.com slash weather. I, there's nothing else to talk about. I mean, it's beautiful outside. Nice. Thank you for the weather shout out about what makes Houston great. I will say that. Some, if you're lucky, you can make an entire career out of that weather. 73, 75 in Sugarland, 76 in Galveston. If you're headed out to the carnival, it is a perfect afternoon and evening. Temperatures right there in the 70s. 68 at 7. Of course, big headliner tonight. Gwen Stefani, I believe this is her first time here. 68 at 7, comfortable skies, 62, 58, maybe a bit chilly, but really no complaints. And then, of course, I want to skip to St. Patrick's Day because tomorrow is going to be beautiful. And most of St. Patrick's Day is 62, 70, 76. By 4 p.m., we start to see some clouds. I'll show you the future cast. We're in great shape today. And again, there's Wednesday, nothing going on, a lot of sunshine. You see the clouds starting to come in on Thursday, along with some rain. So this is 2 o'clock. As we get towards 6 p.m., and of course, St. Patrick's night is probably more active than St. Patrick's Day, day, right? Uh, so 6 right on in through 10, at least a few light showers. I'm not looking for anything severe or anything really heavy. Just be aware this may be sort of a, a light jacket to protect yourself, maybe an umbrella evening. And then it's out of here by the time we get to Friday. So you see the next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tomorrow's great. Thursday it warms to 78. This chance of rain is evening and overnight. And then a great start to our weekend on Friday. All in all, great spring break yeah. weather. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, Frank. Thank you, sir. We want to give you a look now at some of the stories we're working on for KPRC 2 News at 4. Yeah, UFC fighter and his friend, they're being hailed as heroes today. They tackled a guy who fired a shot inside of a popular sushi restaurant in Highland Village. Nobody was hurt, and that gunman was arrested. From groceries to gas, you are paying more for a lot of things right now. KPRC 2 investigator Amy Davis tackles rising natural gas bill prices. And from forever young to forever fixer, why singer Rod Stewart is taking on a new career fixing potholes. I want, so we'll can, explain. Can honey maybe fix potholes? We maybe. never tried it. it. It seems like you can do just about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Even the honey-do list. <laughs> the honey-do list. All right, Frank. Can't wait to read the blog. We'll see you all at 4 o'clock. All righty. Now to the story of a remarkable young pilot. Although there's been steady growth in the number of female pilots over the last few decades, according to the FAA, the percentage of female pilots still remains low. As we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, we're meeting a 25-year-old pilot hoping to educate women about the flight and aviation industry. And Joe Sam is here with her story. Yeah, you guys, she's all dolled up with her makeup and sunglasses. Kay Hall may not be your traditional idea of a pilot, but she's breaking the industry norm and helping other women find their wings. Kay Hall is soaring high after gaining lots of popularity on social media for her flight skills, which according to her, runs in the family. So what actually got me into it was my dad. He is actually a pilot as well. He flies for fun. He never went the commercial route. And uh, it was about three years ago, and I went and did a discovery flight, also known as an introductory flight. And the second the airplane got off the ground, I was hooked. That was 100% what I was going to do. <laughs> She's been flying ever since while taking others along for the flight and hoping that women are inspired and follow in her footsteps. With all of my social media and everything, I have a lot of women reaching out and they're saying, you know, I get a lot of guys telling me I can't do it because I'm a woman, and that's 100% not the case. And I always say the first thing you should do, go find a local flight school or a flight club, sit down and tell them what your concerns are, and go up and have some fun. Go on an introductory flight. Even though you get to fly the airplane, which is what everybody wants to do, you're not really being forced to learn anything. You're just trying to have fun and see if it's something you're passionate about. And I think that's always the first step. But for Kay, flying has become a passion following her very first lesson. So I was a little bit nervous when I first went through the beginning process because, you know, you're walking around the airplane and my instructor was trying to teach me at the same time rather than just kind of letting me have fun. And then as soon as he was like, okay, put your hands on the control yoke. That's what kind of looks like a steering wheel. <laughs> put your feet right here and then I just want you to hold the controls and we're going to take off. And watching the ground just kind of fall away and all of the silence because it wasn't a super busy area was kind of a Addicting in a weird way, and it was the most exciting thing I probably ever will do in my entire life. She would like other women to experience that same rush and excitement, knowing that they can do anything they put their minds to. When I get up there, I feel free. 
You know, I'm still listening to my radio calls and I'm still doing everything I need to as a pilot, keeping everybody safe around me, myself included, of course. But I just feel free. The idea of getting into a small airplane like Little Red and being able to fly hundreds of miles in a day just because the weather was bad or maybe to go see family or something, it's just a feeling that you really can't put too much detail into because it's just so hard to compare it to anything else. That's right, fly high, Kay. You know what? She has partnered with PEA, a premier flight school in the United States, to help and guidance along with the process of becoming a pilot for both in-state and international students. To learn a little bit more about that or how you can fly with Kay, I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. 25 years old, you guys. Incredible. She started when she was 23, and now she's gotten her license. She's up there every day. She says she's going to be taking another trip to Florida in a plane whenever wow. she... That's going to be her next flight. I said, just take me along with you. Right, and you can <laughs> tell just by her energy, her smile, the way she's talking about it, mm -hmm. how much she loves flying. And how confident she is. She seems fearless and how cool to be that young and to have found yes. your calling. Fashion. Yeah. Fantastic, she Joe. Takes me along on that. Pack your bags. Sunshine <laughs> Stadium, we come. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Joe. When we come back, which floor is best for your home? How a team of flooring experts can help you make the choice between carpet or hardwood. And as we go to break, a reminder that Houston Life is teamed up with Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's Women of Distinction event to showcase women in our community who give back. Today, we are honoring Heidi Rockacharley. Heidi has made a career of raising funds for charities and and working behind the scenes like hospice education program she initiated back in 2002. You can scan the QR code on your screen if you'd like to learn more about Heidi. And you can learn more about Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and their Women of Distinction 2022 by visiting Crohn'sColitisFoundation.org. And stay tuned as we continue to honor these women all month long. Welcome back. Choosing the best flooring for your home can be a difficult decision. And if you're debating between carpet or hardwood, a company called 50 Floor can make it easier for you to make the right choice. Hi, Maria. How are you doing? Hey, doing great. So today we're chatting carpet versus hardwood. And carpet is something, my mom has carpet, she loves it. Yes. And it's still very, very popular. But the difference between carpet and hardwood, they're they're vastly different, right? Oh, yes. I mean, they're possibly one of the most contrasting, completely on the opposite bowl type of flooring, yet they are two of the most popular, Derek, because you're either going to be in all the way with hardwood or in all the way with carpet. But guess what? Maybe you're in for both, right? That's Some people true. like the carpet in the bedroom and so forth. Maybe you like the carpet in the media room. Some people really know that uh, this is kind of a little bit more of a plush, kind of cozy feel when you're talking about carpet in the bedrooms. So that's still really popular. Popular. However, some people want hardwood all the way throughout their home, and that's what they're going to go with. But 54 is here to kind of help you decide, and yes, really maybe consider getting both just for different rooms. Well, on the bedroom idea, as you mentioned, I know that's very, very popular because a lot of people, when they get out of bed, they want something soft underfoot. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the things to consider when choosing a, a carpet surface, because carpet has come a long way from when I was a kid. It really has not only in just the different colors that we now have available, but also in the technology. You're talking about uh, the, from the dye that they use to the weaving that is used, the backing in the carpet that is now going to be a lot more, I guess you could just say thicker, but the technology that is used now even allows for stains and spills and all kinds of uh, issues that we used to have with carpets that you could not remove now. That is much easier to remove because of technology. So stain proof, pet proof, etc. Just getting better and better. Yes. Okay. Okay, and let's talk about hardwood. Uh, one of the things we really love about you and 50 Floor is that whether someone's choosing carpet or hardwood or tile, I mean, you have so many Anything. different options. Yes. The samples come to your home along with a design expert so you can see these samples in your space and say, you know, I'm not sure about that carpet. Yes. You run it up to the baby's room and you realize, yes, I want that carpet. Exactly. So that's we, a huge benefit, the samples at home. You said it. Derek, we are going to come to you and that is what kind of sets us apart from everybody else. It's hard to decide on the color of the hardwood or maybe on the texture of the hardwood, the width of the planks, but we're going to come to you and show you everything in the comfort of your own home. So no need to run around uh, from store to store getting sample to sample. We will bring it all to the comfort of your home. You can see it in your space with your furniture and your kids and your pets. Yes. Let's talk about financing because this is something you offer. A lot of people might say, hey, I really want new flooring, but I'm afraid of the cost. 
cost. I know, no excuses, people, because we're gonna offer 0% financing for 12 months. Of course, if you qualify and you have to pay off the balance within the terms of the agreement, but that is certainly an option for folks. Okay, that is fantastic. And it's springtime almost, right? Yes. And so this is a great time of year. If people are looking to update their space, this transformation can happen Ideal. one day. And as little as one day, most of our floor installations are one day. So give us a call, log online, and you can get a free a consultation. And your team will even move the furniture out and then move it back in once the you floor got is in it. place. Maria, it's great to see you. Thank you. And 50 Floor has a special offer for Houston Life viewers. If you call within the next hour, you can get free installation. You can also use the promo code Houston Life to get an extra $100 off your order. Call 877-50-FLOOR. That's 877-503-5667. Or you can visit 50floor.com. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly now, who's getting us ready for some college basketball. Hey, Lauren. That is right. You know what? Coming up, we are breaking down all the things that you need to know for some college basketball. And I'm letting Shasta right here at the Fertitta Center come and take a couple of shots when we're getting ready for the U of H game. And see? Like a pro. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are inside Coog's house today at the Fertitta Center. We're breaking down NCAA's basketball tournament, which is starting today. I'm here with Lauren Sampson. You are Houston's men's basketball director of operations. You basically get the scoop of, of what the guys are doing, how to prepare them. We mentioned brackets, right? But I wanted to also mention how you broke them down. It was kind of like a wedding seating chart, right? So you start with 64. 32. 68. 68. 64. 64, 32. I'm getting there. I promise. I'm learning. It's wonderful. <laughs> Very impressive. So U of H plays their first game in this tournament on Friday. Friday at 920 in Pittsburgh, 820 locally. And come to the watch party. Okay. So tell us about this. This is happening at 8 p.m. Uh, doors open at 7. Okay. Um, downtown Houston and the... It's right across from the George R. Brown, the Avenida to Houston. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Log on to uhcougars.com slash tickets. Get your free ticket and then come. Food, drink, and okay. we'll just enjoy being around the fellow kooks. Okay, that sounds like a plan to me. Like you said, it's a free thing to do. All you have to do is literally log on and get the ticket to come. Claim your ticket. Come okay. Board. So when we're talking about U of H, here's my next question. How do you know who they're going to play next? The bracket. Okay, the bracket. We're back to the bracket. We're back so to the bracket. So when when U of H wins on Friday, we are next focused. Yes, on we are so focused. UAB. Uh, and then that game would be focus on UAB. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm learning the lingo right now. Shasta, you've been a really good team supporter. We've got the Cougar Dolls and the cheerleaders. Do these guys travel with the guys? Yes. Postseason, they were. Huge and creating a great environment in Fort Worth when we won the championship. Okay. And then they're going to be with us on the plane tomorrow when we head to Pittsburgh. This is such an exciting time. Again, we mentioned it does such amazing things for the city of Houston. We love all of our Cougar fans. And this is the best part of the year to get more Cougar fans, right? Get them kind of hooked. Get excited. This is a great program. This is a great arena. Get excited about this march and this run. And then get excited about next year. Yes. We're going to have a great team. Yes. So go Cougs is what we'll do. And then I'm going to show you our new our new uh, team pose. We got it. See that? Oh, yes. I'm going to be on the team next year. Not really. Lauren, thank you so much for thank all you. the info. Derek and Courtney, I'm going to send it back to you guys, but if you want any more information, HoustonLife.tv. I'm going to put a link up for those free tickets to the watch party for this Friday night. That it's is going to be, gonna be fun, one big party for sure, Lauren. It will, and it's a beautiful, beautiful arena. They're a great team. Go Cougs. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lauren. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a young singing star Four years old, by the way. Very big dreams. And as we had to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hi, Kevin. Courtney and Derek, make sure you tune into ET tonight because we're on the red carpet with Sandra Bullock for her new movie with Brad Pitt. Are they friends in real life? Plus, who did Tom Brady promise to kiss if they would star in his new movie? Only I can tell you tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back.
Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, how a local four-year-old singer caught the attention of a major producer in Hollywood. The young and talented Sofia Valentina joins us in studio for a special performance of her brand new single. She is adorable. Right? And ahead of St. Patrick's Day, find out why Ireland should be on your travel bucket list. It certainly is. Our friend Gabe Saglier is in Dublin and will share all of his insight from the Emerald Isle. Okay, that is cool. Ireland is absolutely beautiful. So behind the scenes today, we had a little treat. Uh, your son AJ was in the office. He was here today. Come on up, bud. On. And he's been in the control room. Um, AJ, <laughs> you have been speaking into your mom's ear throughout the entire show, right? Yes. <laughs> and pranking her, giving her fake time cues? Fake time cues. Like, like 10, yes. 9, 8, way too early, right? Yes. And Did there was one part where she was like this, and then I moved out the way like I ran, and then she was like, <gasps> I thought we were coming back. Hey, real quick, do you want to tell a joke? Uh, what are Baker's favorite shoes? Derek? Loafers. Loafers, like a loaf of bread. I like it. What kind of donut can fly? I'm not sure. A plain donut. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. That was funny. Jay, thanks for hanging out with us. You have a good time? Yes. Okay, good. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Do you want to say hi to Keith and Christine? You can Hello. toss it over to them. Hi. Hey, man. <laughs> How are you? You have a future, I think. Yeah. They say you know, I have a future. Follow, follow mom's footsteps. Okay. All right. <laughs>